everybody welcome back to another episode of southern dirt my name is summer and today i'll be giving you an update of my central florida zone 9 garden if you're just now tuning in make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss another update if you also are new make sure that you check out my what to plant month to month series that i did last year i'll put that link in the description below that will show you what you can plant for our zone nine each month and which will ensure you of having something that you can harvest all throughout the year here in Central Florida. I also wanted to send out some encouragement to the ones that may have lost their gardens during this recent storm. I also know there's a storm coming our way again. So I did put together a video of how to protect your garden from a storm um, I'll put that in the link or in the description below, but also knowing that it's not too late to start over. There's tons of things that we can plant this month right now that we can be harvesting in just 45 days. So make sure you check out what to plant and when for this month and maybe the following month if you're not ready to start obviously before this storm. So everybody stay safe and we'll see you next month. Good morning everybody. I hope everybody is at least halfway done with cleaning up after the hurricane. Um, we had minimal damage here thankfully. Uh, we did not have our garden planted. We only had our seminal pumpkins from the summer in and we had uh, direct sowed some sunflower seeds um, which were about half the size they are now. Thankfully they did I mean they did lay over in the storm but we were able to stake them up and thankfully most of them um, have flowered and or are going to flower. Uh, we lost a little our fan there and we took the panels off of our pergola here. So we're still in the works of cleaning up around here. Um, we lost a few trees, um, our bananas. Uh, we lost a lot of those, but I know they'll bounce back. If you guys have yet to uh, not subscribe to our newsletter, make sure you do that. Um, all you got to do is give us your email, click on the link, I'll put it in the description below. We give you updates of what's going on at our farm and garden along with specials and um, different things that you can plant each month. So I'm just going to start over here and show you what we've got going on. We have some African blue basil, which this has been a new favorite of mine. You can see all these beautiful flowers. These have been wonderful pollinators. So I've been propagating this like crazy. We plan on adding more to our food forest out front. Oh, there's a bee. And we are placing them around the garden to attract more pollinators. We've got some cranberry hibiscus. We have some longevity spinach, which has been new to the garden this year as well, which I've not grown it through the summer and look at how amazing this is. This is just one plant. It just keeps giving us so much food. Um, I also have a lighter green color, but this, I was just amazed with how much food that we get from it. And it does not require much care. and It's practically bug resistant. We haven't had any problems with bugs or anything on it. We still have some kale left from last year in here. I went ahead and overwintered my peppers. Um, in our Bago garden beds along in our green stalks and I'll show you um, What I might do differently next year, but you can actually cut these back They're a perennial if you didn't know peppers are perennials so you can actually if you're in a colder zone you can take them inside and uh, put them in pot for winter or you can cut them back and Get some new growth for the next growing season So it looks like these guys did not do well with overwintering. I should just let them be this one's doing fine um, recently, I have taken some basil from my other plants and just stuck them in these beds to propagate them. And basil is so easy to propagate. It took no care at all. I literally took a little clipping, stuck it in here, and just let the water irrigate them. Um, I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to put over here. This is kind of my shadier bed. So I have that open. I'm kind of just waiting to see if anything fancy shows up in the box stores. About 98% of my garden is started from seed, but 
I also like to browse the stores, which the prices have been ridiculous, to see if there's something unique that I don't have yet in the garden. Um, this is some turmeric. This was gifted from me to me um, last Christmas, and I never grown it, but it's really been fun. And um, when I harvest it, I'll I'll show you guys the the roots. They're they're really neat. So we've been growing that. We also have some in our backyard garden. Over here on our metal trellis, we planted some, what do we plant over here? We planted butterfly peas. So I've always wanted to grow these. They give off these purple flowers and then you can dry them and make tea with them. This beautiful purple tea. Um, so these were gifted to me as well and I'm super excited to grow those. Um, I did have some Madagascar beans here um, that were a perennial. Unfortunately, during the summer, it was so wet in this area. We have a drain field here, and I don't know what happened, but it was just so wet over here. So I've actually removed my irrigation, and hopefully um, these guys will do fine here. And I'm really excited to show you my green stock garden this year. I have decided to put a lot of tomato plants in here. These are called a cyan variety. I bought one plant at Lowe's last year that did so well. It stayed just very small, almost as tall as they are now, and gave off so many tomatoes. We can see all the flowers already. And I saved the seeds from it. So I started these plants, put them here, and so far they are doing amazing in the green stock. I also have planted bush beans in the pockets here. They have not come up yet. I also planted some carrots, which I've never planted carrots or bush beans in my green stock, but my neighbor bought a green stock and is doing that right now. And I've been taking care of her green stock and I'm like, why have I not thought to grow beans in my green stock? So I'm actually going to be doing that. And I've got some kale at the bottom. I've got one a um, little uh, sweet pepper, sweet banana pepper that actually came up. Um, none of my sweet peppers came up except for a few, so that was one of them this year. All of our succulents, this is my little random succulent stand. I always love looking at clearance cells and trying to find succulents that I don't have and just propagating them. My kids love doing that as well. <clears throat> Recently, my children were gifted these cute little gardens from a friend, and I'm like, hey, these would be wonderful Christmas gifts and gift ideas that I do plan on doing a um, holiday gift idea video here soon, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. Over here, we've got some bok choy. And I have, I think that's a mum that I bought at the store on clearance. <laughs> and some more bok choy. I just love bok choy and how beautiful it is. We can use it in salads and also stir fry them. We've got some um, salad bowl lettuce here. I've also planted some onions right in here. They're kind of just randomly placed. I've got cabbage and these are I think Bonnie's best collard greens. I did buy these from the store. I uh, purchased plants like this a couple years ago and they did so good um, so it actually I had one that lasted almost two years so I thought I'd throw some of these in we also started some collard greens from seed I'll show you here in a little bit I also planted some beets I've never been really successful with beets but they're just starting to pop up and thanks to some of my subscribers they told me that I was starting them too early so this is the last thing we planted in our garden this year. And um, so we have some beets and hopefully we'll have some success with just planting them later in the season. Over here are our uh, money maker tomato plants. We started from seed along with some cilantro. Our family eats a lot of cilantro and I never can grow enough. So I just sprinkled some seeds um, right there in the middle. See how those would do. I can't remember if I planted carrots or not. I think I plant, I think I sprinkled a little bit of carrots in here as well. <clears throat> but stay tuned to the next video to see if that is true. So over here in this row, we have our Seminole pumpkin patch. 
Um, we also have a seminal pumpkin patch in our front yard food forest that uh, has not done as well because we just ha hadn't had a whole bunch of rain. But we've gotten a few pumpkins from our patches. And if I can find one, we still actually have some growing here. There is one that's green. I've harvested most that are at the good color stage and we've brought them in our house to use as decorations. But this is a wonderful uh, pumpkin. It's native to Florida. I do sell seeds. So if anybody wants to purchase seeds, these are wonderful to store um, for the year. They, they store up to nine months and I have stored them personally up to nine months and they're just wonderful to, to put in soups and pies and all kinds of things. We make tons of different things. These are Everglades tomatoes. We started these in August and these are these give off tons of little tomatoes, another Florida native plant. I do save the seeds and sell them as well. One of my goals this year was to plant more flowers from seeds. So we sprinkled some, I think they're vulture button seeds here. It's so hard to tell what, I think these are them right here. I've had a hard time this year keeping up with my weeds in the garden. I've decided to homeschool my children, which has taken up a lot of my time. Thankfully, they are out here helping me, but the garden seems to be last on the list with school and everything else. We've got some zinnias here that I just sprinkled on, and I think some more um, butcher buttons here. I have some more moneymaker tomatoes here. Um, we went to the mountains uh, a couple weeks ago to visit my mom and see some fall leaves. And we did have a pesky deer that hopped the fence and ate most of my bean plants over here. And some of my sunflowers that I had over here. Usually if we have a deer that jumps the fence, it's a yearling and it doesn't usually do a ton of damage, but it's coming after the beans and the sunflowers and it occasionally will chop us up a tomato plant. But thankfully, the tomato plants will come back. My beans have already started to come back. So um, I've got all kinds of different protection here. I, really, I just need a high fence, which that's most likely not gonna happen. But it's usually when we, it's silent around here, whenever we go on a vacation. Um, so that's really the time when steer hop our fence. Um, over here, we have some carrots. We had sectioned them off with different varieties here, and each child planted their variety of um, carrots. We have, let's see, we have a, a garden blend there, and we have a tender sweet here, and long imperial over here. Also this year I use this little, uh, it's like pokes holes into the ground and helps you with spacing. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, it was actually helpful. The kids had fun doing that. I've been using it with some of the other items like my, uh, anything I direct so, so with peas or beets or beans. It's great and of course any kind of root vegetable like carrots. It's great to help with spacing. Um, all the products that I use you can find in the description below. I have Amazon links, which gives me a tiny little uh, commission there, along with any of the products I use in my garden, like my green stalks and my Vigo beds, and my new garden inside, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's my uh, indoor LED light with Smart Garden. Um, I'll show you that, that's been a lot of fun. But all those products you can find discounts using my link and I make a small commission which helps me continue to do these videos for you. Over here I have squash and zucchini. I can't remember the name of this. I think it's like a little like acorn. Oh, I, okay, this is early, oh, okay, here it is. <laughs> early bush scallop. I had really fun time growing these. They're just cool. They almost look like a little acorn squash um, and so I'm excited to see how these will do 
I've really never been super successful with growing squash or zucchini. I usually get a couple and then the bugs come in and it's, it's so hard for me to keep these plants healthy. And um, I've been using a new fertilizer that has been helpful. Um, that's also in the description below. I can spray it on my plants and it helps um, keep down the powdery mildew and different things like that. So I had a better growing season last year. So you can find that in the description below. Down here, I started some onions. And those, are just, those aren't grown from seed, they're just little onion sets that you can get at the store. Um, here I've got some cabbage. I started cabbage at different stages, so I'm not getting all my cabbage at once. Over here, I have planted some beets. Beets are so healthy. I know a lot of people don't like them. I never really did, but we like to roast them and um, marinate them with vinegar and some seasonings. And then we put that on our salads with sweet candied pecans and fruit. And then you, it really does not, um, it's really not that tough to eat. So um, it's a great cancer fighter. So if you're not growing beets, try it. They're really fun to grow. And you can see they're just starting to pop up and it's not too late to plant them. There they are. Over here I have different variety of collard greens. I think these are vates. Um, over here I have um, a different variety of kale. Um, I think that's a vates kale. Then I have regular dinosaur kale. Over here we're giving Brussels sprouts another shot. I think I have about four plants and I had a mustard green over here, but it was so hot. We just really, it's been hot in Florida. So some of my plants just shriveled up and died um, in the heat. So I suggest if you're ever starting any plants to make sure you're starting them in trays instead of direct sowing. Um, like I told you before, I direct sow um, my root vegetables and my beans and peas. Those seem to do fine with the heat, but anything else, any leafy green, is gonna be hard to just direct sow. Um, it's easier to start them in trays. Over here, I have what is left of some of my salad that I'm gonna put into my green stalks. And I have some curly kale that is left over from last season that is looking like a tree. We have our um, African blue basil, which I took a cutting from and just stuck it into this bed um, and I also have some bok choy some more African blue basil so on this side of the garden we have our two green stock gardens we've got some pintas up here I've got one of those um, tomatoes they're called Siam tomatoes that stay real short here another one over here We've got some rosemary I propagated along with some other herbs. I just recently cut them back because they were just super huge. Um, I am growing some eggplants. Actually, these were given to me from my neighbor. She always grows eggplants and always shares them with me. I've never grown eggplants in the green stock, so this will be new. Um, I had peppers down here that I overwintered and cut down which on the sunny side didn't do so good. But back here in the shade, all of them have survived. So if I ever overwinter peppers again, I'll make sure when I cut them back, I'm gonna bring them in the shade and let them be before we bring them back to the garden. Um, so far, these guys are already putting out new buds. So this year, what I'm trying to do with my green stalks is plant mainly plants that are not frost hardy in them because over the past seven years of gardening whenever we have a frost advisory it's so hard for me to cover all my plants in the garden and with the green stock garden they make this simple beautiful easy frost cover that just you throw it over and it zips up and I have purchased those for all my green stocks so as you can see, we've got tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, beans, and all of those, if we get a freeze or a frost, we're gonna lose them if we don't cover them. So I can just focus on my green stalks.
Oh, and my strawberries, which I'm going to be purchasing strawberries. I'm waiting for our local uh, garden shop to get them in stock. So I'll have a full strawberry tower, which again, those would freeze back if we get a frost. So the evenings of freeze advisories or frost advisories will be simple this year with those frost covers. So if you don't have a green stock already, I 100% suggest them. I love them. If I knew about them before I started gardening, that's all I would have. I would have these green stalks and my Vigo beds. So over here is what is left of our pumpkin patch from this summer. We still had some pumpkins on them, so I didn't want to pull them quite yet. They have, they bring in great pollinators as well. So we have a few little ones left here. I've got a few over here. It looks like this plant has just completely died off here, but there's a little bit of green on them. So I'm going to let them be for a little bit. Over here are all of our sunflowers. We have mixed sunflowers. I have mammoth sunflowers in this row, which grow up to 10 to 12 feet tall. If this is the first time you are watching my channel, um, definitely go back and look at some of my older videos. They're just amazing sunflowers and I grow them every season. And I also sell seeds for them. If you wanna get any of those, you can find them on my website. Here is a surviving kale plant from last year. Uh, which is doing actually pretty good. We have mixed sunflowers here. We have these, um, ca they're called ruby red sunflowers. I wish I would have done this video a little earlier, but they give off these really pretty um, flowers. Here's one, there you go. They're just really pretty. My girls absolutely love them. And just multi sunflower heads here. Over here, we have some more collard greens. I think these are Georgia Southern collards, which I'll be adding to the website here soon. These are wonderful to grow in our zone. My uh, daughter, June, loves sugar daddy peas, any kind of pea, and she planted all of these, which are, we need to kind of lift up and help encourage them to grow up here. We have one foxglove that survived the summer, so we're just gonna let him be and see if it actually gives us flowers this year. And I have some more uh, collard greens down here. So this part of the garden is more shadier this past year because this oak tree right here has gotten massive. We used to have a really decent sun on this side, so that has been a challenge for me and growing things over here, but um, kind of just limits us to what we can grow on this side. Our garden is lined with about 40 blueberry plants, and I recently fertilized these with a organic blueberry fertilizer, and they're, they're shooting off a decent amount of flowers right now. We trimmed them back, they were looking pretty rough, and we lost a few through the summer but um, they're coming back. I think we'll be good and we might have to replant a couple. Um, over here, we've got some more longevity spinach. And here's our other longevity spinach. This is like a survival food. Um, it is given so much food. We've been throwing them in soups. I've been um, frying them up and putting Parmesan cheese, almost like a cheesy spinach. Um, so maybe I'll make a spinach chip. I'll let you guys know how that turns out but um, this has been a wonderful addition to the garden. I may be selling cuttings here soon on the garden, on my uh, website because it is such a wonderful plant. I'd love to be able to get these into other people's gardens in Florida. I don't think I showed you my beans or told you much about my beans other than the deer had eaten them, had eaten them. Um, but we do have what's called a Royal Burgundy bean over here. They give off these really cool purple beans and when you cook them, they turn green. So we have this whole side of uh, burgundy beans, and then this is just a regular um, pole bean over here. So um, we have some zinnias that are popping up randomly here. I think I've got a sunflower down at the end. And I 
think I've pretty much showed you all my garden except for the herbs. And here is my herb garden. This is my longest living plant uh, in the garden. This is actually where it all started. Um, I went to a local garden center and they put me together this little herb garden in a pot and it was so beautiful. And I just started using fresh herbs while cooking and it just changed my life. <laughs> it made me feel like I was a chef and we were eating dinners from a fancy restaurant by using fresh herbs and so just dried plain old herbs. So if you haven't started a garden, start small with just a little herb garden and just start using it in uh, like our rosemary. We use um, in our tea, we make rosemary tea. Our kids are constantly coming out here and just clipping uh, little pieces and putting it in their, their lemonade and their tea. We have um, some green onions here. I'm sorry, these are scallions and, or chai, what am I talking about? These are chives. <laughs> and I have an onion chive and a garlic chive and we put these on our potatoes. And I have some oregano here. I have more oregano over here. Um, typically we have some basil in here as well. So just having this fresh, um, this is a great preventative during flu season. Um, to just put this in your tea um, or put sprinkle on your food. So um, start small, start with a start with a green stock garden. They're so easy to plant. You're not bending over a ton. And or start with a raised bed. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Thank you for being patient with me during all of our hurricane cleanup and delays and my homeschooling adventure. Um, but we have been very blessed, very thankful all of our family is accounted for. I hope everyone is doing okay. If there is a special need, I am very help, happy to share my seeds um, with you guys. If you lost your garden during the storm, I have a nice seed stock here. So don't be afraid to send me an email um, and we'll be happy to get you started. We'll talk to you guys soon.